Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor, Jim Pintel, and today's topic of discussion is pneumatic logic valves. Our objective is to examine two logic valves, specifically the AND or dual pressure valve and the OR or shuttle valve and their application in pneumatic systems. AND and OR valves are logic valves that make predictable decisions about certain inputs and are often used to control their operation of a larger air piloted pneumatic system. Both valves have two inputs and one output. An AND or dual pressure valve works like this. There must be a pilot signal at both inputs A and B for there to be an output. A red axe symbolizes the absence of an input or an output, whereas a green check mark symbolizes the presence of an input or an output. When neither A nor B receive an air pilot signal, the AND valve produces no output. When only A receives an air pilot signal, the AND valve produces no output. When only B receives an air pilot signal, the AND valve produces no output. Only when both A and B receive an air pilot signal does the AND valve produce output. In contrast, an OR or shuttle valve works like this. There must be a pilot signal at either input A or input B for there to be an output. When neither A nor B receive an air pilot signal, the OR valve produces no output. When only A receives an air pilot signal, the OR valve produces output. When only B receives an air pilot signal, the OR valve produces output. And finally, when both A and B receive an air pilot signal, the OR valve also produces output. Beyond the logical operation of these two valves, they also exhibit pressure selection. When both air pilot A and B are present for an AND valve, an AND valve selects the lowest of the two pressures. Whereas when both air pilot A and B are present for an OR valve, it selects the highest of the two pressures. A simple test circuit can be used to demonstrate the function of these two logic valves. Let's take a look at the AND or dual pressure valve first. The regulator on the left is set to 2 bar, or roughly 29 psi. The valve on the left blocks or passes a signal to input A. The regulator on the right is set to 3 bar, or roughly 43.5 psi. The valve on the right blocks or passes a signal to input B. You'll recall an AND valve behaves as follows. There must be a pilot signal at both inputs A and B for there to be an output. Additionally, when both air pilots A and B are present for an AND valve, it selects the lowest of the two pressures. When neither A nor B receive an air pilot signal, the AND valve produces no output. When only A receives an air pilot signal, the AND valve produces no output. When only B receives an air pilot signal, the AND valve produces no output. Only when both A and B receive an air pilot signal does the AND valve produce output. You will note the AND valve selects the lowest of the two pressures, notably A at 2 bar. Let's do the same thing for an OR valve. As previously, the regulator on the left is set to 2 bar, or roughly 29 psi. The valve on the left blocks or passes a signal to input A. The regulator on the right is set to 3 bar, or roughly 43.5 psi. The valve on the right blocks or passes a signal to input B. Recall an OR valve behaves as follows. There must be a pilot signal at either input A or B for there to be an output. Additionally, when both air pilots A and B are present for an OR valve, it selects the highest of the two pressures. When neither A nor B receive an air pilot signal, the OR valve produces no output. When only A receives an air pilot signal, the OR valve produces output. When only B receives an air pilot signal, the OR valve produces output. Finally, when both A and B receive an air pilot signal, the OR valve also produces output. You'll note the OR valve selects the highest of the two pressures, notably B at 3 bar. Now that you've got a general understanding of the basic operation of AND and OR valves, let's discuss two simple applications. AND valves are commonly used in safety circuits, which necessitate two or more conditions both be simultaneously true prior to moving an actuator. The classic example being a pneumatically operated press or a shear that necessitates an operator have both hands in a safe area prior to actuating it. In order to actuate the air piloted directional control valve, an operator must have one hand on push button A and the other hand on push button B. Only when both hands are in the clear, simultaneously actuating push button A and push button B can an operator extend the cylinder. OR valves, in contrast, are commonly used in pneumatic circuits which necessitate operation from more than one location. The classic example being an operator stationed some distance away and another station at the point of use. An operator sitting at a desk some distance away can extend and retract the cylinder using push button A. Similarly, a technician servicing the equipment wishing to test it out can extend and retract the cylinder using push button B at the point of use. Beyond logical operations, I'd like to highlight the pressure selection feature of the OR valve. 
Beyond logical function, this is quite a handy feature commonly employed in pneumatic systems necessitating a backup or alternative source. Consider some primary pneumatic source operating at 100 PSI and a backup accumulator charged at 90 PSI as inputs to an OR valve supplying some pneumatic system performing some critical operation. In ordinary circumstances, the OR valve passes the primary pneumatic source at 100 PSI to the system and blocks the backup. In the event of failure of the primary pneumatic source or when pressure in the primary pneumatic source catastrophically drops, the OR valve blocks the primary pneumatic source and passes the backup accumulator to the pneumatic system, allowing a period of time for an orderly shutdown. There are alternative methods to implementing logical or decision-making functions inside an air-piloted pneumatic systems, but they aren't nearly as pretty nor easy to implement as logic valves. For example, one could rig up an AND function using a series connection of two normally closed valves. If both valves are closed, there's no output. If valve A is open and valve B is closed, there's still no output. If valve A is closed and valve B is open, there's still no output. The only way to get any output is to open both valve A and valve B. Similarly, one could also rig up an OR function using a parallel connection of two normally closed valves. If both valves are closed, there's no output. If valve A is open and valve B is closed, there is output. If valve A is closed and valve B is open, there is output. Finally, when both valve A and B are open, there is output. These systems do exhibit logical AND and OR behavior. However, they're a little messy and do not respond well to this simple challenge. Turn an AND into an OR. Oftentimes, technicians are tasked with updating or modifying systems, and sometimes this may necessitate a change in logical function. To turn a series AND connection into a parallel OR connection, you'd have to lock out and tag out the system, disconnect valve B, find a T fitting for source connection to B, find another T fitting for the output, and then restart the system. Sounds like a bunch of work, and it is. To top it off, these implementations don't really function that well. For example, consider the parallel OR configuration when both valves A and B are open. In addition to forward passage to the output, these also allow undesirable reverse passage A into B and B into A. For this reason, logic valves are a much better choice. Let's say we start with valve A and B and we want to perform an AND function. Go and grab an AND valve off the shelf and plug it in. Done. Let's say you want to change this to an OR function. Too easy. Lock it out, tag it out, unplug the AND valve, grab an OR valve off the shelf and plug it in. Done. Also, you don't have any of the potentially undesirable backflow issues I mentioned earlier when you're using logic valves dedicated for this purpose.